a very good evening sir in your ip week 28 of the lecture series a program of the dpit ipr chair usmania university so, uh, from our team uh, mr srinivas rao will be doing the formal introduction sir and after that uh, uh, we will have the uh, lecture by you sir thank you so much sir. and uh, good evening all the participants welcome to uh, week 28 uh, episode or week of uh, DPIT IPR chair know your IP weekly lecture series well uh, this is a privilege for me to introduce Dr. Gautam Bhattacharya so Dr. Gautam Bhattacharya is a patent attorney and uh, chair to patent practice at KNS Partners KNS Partners is a, a reputed firm in the intellectual property domain he handles patent drafting and prosecution in fields of life sciences. He represents several multinational and domestic corporations on variety of IP issues and works very closely with several startups and spin-offs. He also assists clients in issues related to patentability, licensing, due diligence, and valuation and regularly conducts patent workshops like this and invention capturing sessions for the clients. So he has got a diversified experience in all the domains of intellectual property. Uh, Dr. Gautam has significant experience and a proven track record of assisting biotechnology and biomedical startups, providing strategic advice on filing and best practices. In addition to pure patent prosecution, besides patent drafting and prosecution, he has been active in IP awareness creation amongst the universities incubation centers and msmes he is a regular speaker at various conferences and seminars and has several articles to his credit published in reputed international and international scientific journals such as nature biotechnology water research separation science and technology soil science and plant analysis to name a few he is a member of india u.s working group on ipr at the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which is FICI. He also serves as a member of several institution com committees of national institutes, including National Institute of Pathology and National Institute of Immunology. He has been ranked as IAM Strategy 300, the world leading IP strategies in 2019, 2020, 2022, and IAM Patent 1000 the world's leading patent prosecution in 2020. So hereby uh, request sir to please take over this session and uh, enlighten us. Thank you, sir. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Srinivas Garu and uh, Dr. Ifan uh, for your kind introduction. So uh, today's uh, discussion is on IP strategy. To various aspects, various elements of IP strategy. Now, what is strategy? Strategy is uh, is all about three questions: why, what, and how. So, if we can map the answers of the three questions, then we have a good strategy in place. <clears throat> Look at some data point. A Fortune 500 companies, 1955 and 2015. So only 61 companies were in the Fortune 500 in both the list, 1955 and 2015. And you know what is the similarity? What are the uh, uh, common attribute? Be it Gel Motor, be it Dupont, be it Exmobil, be it uh, Coke, Caterpillar, all are Boeing, 3M, Abbott, Pfizer, Pepsi, Navistar. So they are the uh, R&D driven and IP driven. So R&D and IP are the mantras for their success. And a similar uh, yeah, uh, uh, what you call tangible asset and intangible asset. 
now if you look at 1975 the evolution how uh, of the uh, valuation how tangible asset and intangible asset had grown in last uh, few decades you will see intangible asset in 1975 was 17 and 2015 it is 84 so in ip is one form of intangible asset so in a nutshell what i wanted to tell you all is ip uh, uh, ip driven r d are the mantras for your success and sustenance now this uh, r d research and development this innovation how you manage your you manage by your efficient ip strategies so what are the uh, these uh, what are these strategies ip protection and building portfolio now right now what we do we stop here but for managing innovation and ma and to make it effective the second point is extremely important which is leveraging the ip so there is no point in creating the portfolio and keep on spending over it unless we can leverage the ip so now uh, this uh, ip portfolio what is the ip portfolio which is the meaningful productive efficient ip portfolio is when ip and business strategies talk to each other and even this uh, uh, based out of this discussion between ip strategy and business strategy if the patent portfolio any ip portfolio is developed on purpose and based on your business strategy then only it becomes meaningful ip portfolio otherwise there is no point creating ip and uh, 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 file a huge number of patent application uh, in 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 your uh, uh, kitty so what is traditional view of ip why i said because till now what we keep on we are doing it is effective ip protection and building ip portfolio so this is a just representation of traditional view of ip this is my area i'll not allow ip is a negative right i'll not allow anyone to enter in my uh, premises so that is the traditional view but that is not the efficient way to leverage the ip that is not the strategy strategy is there are many ways to to leverage in other words many ways to slice your ip cake so you can license it there could be area which is your non core which can be shared with people you earn royalty there are there could be territory uh, territory so where uh, you are not actually active you can find a potential licensee and uh, license it to the which is beyond your ability you will you will never be as a startup i'll never be able to uh, exploit or leverage my ip in uh, sudan or any part of africa or in europe so why don't you uh, license it? So now next question comes, who will take my license? Therefore, the strategy, when you create your IP, so therefore they, these two points are very important. IP and business strategies must talk to each other and patent portfolio develop on purpose. If it is developed on purpose, then certainly there will be a business case behind it and you will be able to uh, find out potential licensee so when we start uh, when we have an innovation we start a company what should be the the strategy ip strategy uh, whether i have a business case before we should ask ourselves a question uh, before filing ip what is the business case behind it 
what I'll do, even at times, uh, to create the, uh, to actually increase the valuation, you need to have IP. So that is your business case. At times, to, uh, to prevent your competitor is your strategy. That is the business case. At times, uh, you, you cross license, uh, you exchange your ideas with your uh, peer firms. That is your uh, business case. So you should have a business case. And business case should be based on its commercial application. Second point comes to uh, her mind is process for identifying IP asset within the business. So what kind of IP assets, uh, if we are acquiring a company or if we have uh, if we have started a company six months down the line, just let uh, do we have any process to keep on uh, assessing whether we have IP, uh, whether we have created IP or not. So it could be patent, it could be TM, design, copyright, trade secret, and many more. So, and quite often we ignore uh, one or the other IP rights. IP is a bundle of rights. It is not. Uh, uh, it is not only patent. It is not only trademark or design. So today we are not going into the details of patent, trademark, design, trade secret, copyright, uh, geographical indication, uh, plant variety. I'm saying it is a bundle of right and it need, needs to be protected. I have given an example. Say this stand is patented because uh, there is an inventive concept. Uh, you don't, uh, the tip doesn't touch the eyeball. Uh, no chances of damage. So this part is patented. Second, the bottle design. Even you can have a design as well, as long as it has aesthetics, it is appealing. So you can have a design as well. This logo is trademark. And maybe you have the competition, you wanted to make it a trade secret. So it's a, uh, it. this is a bundle of right. And you need to understand and you need to identify, yes, it's a, it is a, there are five, uh, three, four kinds of IP are embedded in my uh, innovation. Uh, identifying intellectual property asset that is already there. Uh, or suppose you have acquired a company. So you should know what, uh, whether the company has already developed uh, IP or not. So you need to have an IP audit. A process and capturing IP assets. SOPs for identifying uh, IP within the business. So how you can do that? Idea sensation with inventors, sales and marketing teams, because sales and marketing team will tell you that uh, when you need uh, to brand your product. So the trademark. Uh, becomes very important for the sales and marketing team. Design team, if you have, if you are developing a bottle, which can be protected, uh, which can be design protected. So you need to, you need to continuously working with the, the, these teams for better to strategize. IP audit. Time to time, you need to you need to have IP audit. IP audit includes everything, whether my product is infringing others or not. That is also part of your IP audit. Whether any any innovation which is left out, which is not protected, that is also comes under IP audit and the overall IP strategy. Due diligence whether my innovation what ip that i uh, that i have created time to time you need to check whether it it is uh, uh, alive or not uh, whether we are complying with all the laws or not whether we have a file for india there is one uh, important uh, uh, important provision is uh, filing working statement so once the patent is granted granted you need to keep on 
the patent top is updated about your uh, whether it is worked or not so these are the due diligence you need to keep on doing it right, which is a part of your strategy compliance check so you develop ip but if it is a violation of any law then it is not an ip it will not remain as a right so if you have filed an application without complying biodiversity law where your innovation has used indian biological resources then you are gone the you will not be able to enforce your right there there is a penal provision as well foreign filing license i'm just giving these examples uh, non disclosure agreement you need to check part of the compliance check whether non disclosure agreement with employees or vendors is in place or not because you have to have agreements uh, with employees and vendors so tomorrow vendors should not uh, pass on the information to your competitor restricted access to uh, information pre filing analytics it is very very important pre filing analytics be it patent be it trademark you need to you need to understand what do you stand where do we uh, stand whether uh, i'll be able to cross the river or not so these are the uh, the part of the uh, the uh, strategy pre filing ip strategy next is developing an innovation map and branding strategy so what is your long short term and long term commercial strategy at times it depends on your uh, on your technology if it is a high tech in the electronics and computer science it the uh, the shelf life is very short so then do you need how much we need to uh, um, how much money fund you need to spend on on your such kind of inno innovation you need to check whether we'll keep it a trade secret or not because of based on its a shelf life long term commercial strategy whether uh, you would like to use it or in a long term you would like to uh, like to collaborate you like to cross license that it has to be a long term and short term business strategy at times uh, in a short term startup companies for example they develop lot of ip and the purpose of the business case behind developing all those ips is uh, creating value and they they sell the uh, company some other big company acquire them and that is the, their short term strategy so there has to be strategy so whatever you are doing why we are doing that uh, then pre filing strategies which in continuation to my previous point uh, for patent it is patentability search and it is also very important if you do not um, uh, do not take up the patentability search before filing an application then at the end of the day uh, you would have paid huge huge money without receiving the without getting a grant because there is a possibility that you have reinvented the wheel so it's imperative to assess whether i have whatever i have done is new whatever the patentable criteria is fulfilling patentable criteria or not part of your uh, it portfolio development strategy going global so before you how you decide whether to go global or not whether to restrict your territory only in your country so you need to the part of your strategy you need to assess where your competitors are located where the market for the inventions you have developed something for example a uh, uh, wonderful rice variety there is no point in going and filing an application in japan rather you should file an application uh, related to electronics computer science 
or high tech in Japan, Korea, because they have the market. So uh, Japan may not have a market for some drug, and which is, for example, polio. A polio drug, if you develop and file a patent application, no point in filing the application in Japan. So, uh, just given an example, if they do not have a polio in their country, there is no point. Is is it? Uh, what is the ease of copying? So, if it is extremely easy to copy, then we have to file patent application. We have to protect our uh, technology. What is the size of your IP budget? How you can best leverage your IP budget and enforceability? I am filing an application. I get a patent. Whether I'll be able to enforce my right efficiently in China, so or any country where uh, there is a question on the enforceability. So these are the some of the points, strategic point that you we need. We must be aware when we are going global in order to create the the IP portfolio, meaningful IP portfolio. Again, licensing possibilities. This is which is part of your uh, long term, short term strategy. Whether, uh, whether uh, we are developing the technology, protecting your IP for uh, licensing, Qualcomm. As an example, Qualcomm earn more in licensing uh, in royalty as compared to their selling their pro new product, selling their chips. Possible future of the technology and the industry. How uh, uh, now if if we spend a lot of money uh, or a uh, time and energy on internal combustion engine? Uh, ideally, it should not be a right strategy because five years down the line, uh, alternate energy driven car, automobile uh, will dominate the market. So uh, you will see most of the investment are now going in electric car, solar driven car, solar power driven car, hydrogen power driven car. So uh, where you need to invest, where you need to invest your time uh and develop the technology all depends on the future landscape of a particular technology so uh branding strategy is very important uh for a cfo branding brand is an asset for marketing team it is a promise uh when you say uh, i am giving you mcdonald burger so uh, the quality is a promise for a consumer always a set of emotion and ideas they associate with companies it could be mercedes benz it's that emotion i am driving one of the uh, most advanced car or uh, or it could be uh, alexa i am using state of the art technology so so branding strategy is very important part uh, part of your IP strategy. Otherwise, uh, this is uh, some interesting slide. I'll I'll come to the Im uh, the implication if branding strategy is not kept in mind uh, later after this slide. So whenever you create a brand, there are different kinds of uh, case to strongest brand. Some of the brands people create with a generic term. term. If you have a medicine, medical store, if you uh, write something medical store, that is a generic term. Descriptive. For example, Burger King is a descriptive mark. Though Burger King is an old brand, therefore that time they got it. But now if Burger King had to apply, they wouldn't have given uh, received the, uh, the registration. So the best mark is the fanciful mark, where there is no correlation between the product that you sell and, and the mark, like Nike, Google, nothing to do with uh, their product. So if you do not have a very 
uh, efficient branding strategy, this is going to be the fate of the brand. Trademark who lost the battle, Aspirin. Aspirin was a brand, but now Aspirin used as generic term. Escalator. All of us, we say escalator. It's, it's a brand. Kerosene is a brand. Nylon, Lycra, these are brands. So therefore, it is uh, even the zip is a, a, a brand. So if we don't uh, don't enforce uh, or don't uh, uh, we do not have a branding strategy in place, so we have to say RIP the trademark. So just a uh, uh, few uh, uh, overall uh, overall understanding about the pre -fi pre filing analytics which is a patentable since patent is one of the important aspect of innovation and for trademark it is availability search whether that kind of mark is available or not so coming back to the patent it is there are uh, uh, what we called it's a patentability search whether it is novel whether it is inventive because these are two very very important criteria uh, for uh, for getting a patent so patentability search would also help you in strategizing your claims so once you conduct a search you know you come to know that what is the landscape of the technology so accordingly you strategize your claim at times you modulate your innovation going global so i'll talk about both patent and uh, and trademark so there are various ways we can uh, go global so one very important and most efficient uh, single window is the pct patent cooperation treaty it is not now 150 i think it is 156 or 154 so uh, it is a single window system uh, which is uh, the treaty is signed by about 154, 155 countries. The numbers are increasing every year. So, what is the what is the beauty of that? The moment if you file an application today in India, and if you file uh, simultaneously another uh, PCT application, then you get 30 months time to protect your invention in all the member countries that is about 154 countries so basically you are having provisional protection in 154 countries but if you fail to file within 30 months or 31 months as the case may be different country has a different uh, different uh, due date but generally 30 months we should consider 30 months from the first filing so you get a lot of advantage where you can find out uh, you can uh, you can find out your uh, uh, investor you can uh, find out your potential licensee you do not have to spend much because uh, in pct the cost is also not much but protecting in 152 countries provisionally delay the translation cost uh, global publication it is published so you get licensing opportunity if your innovation is mind-blowing or uh, or has a potential to bring changes in that particular technology area certainly people will uh, the companies will come to you and also the PCT uh, PCT issues patentability report so you can you will get a second chance after you you have already done a prior art search and you again pct uh, uh, pct gives you an examination report based on their searches so you become doubly sure that yes your, your, your innovation your technology is novel and inventive and at times uh, whatever search report 
uh, whatever PCT says, examiners in PCT says may not be correct. You know, uh, then you have an option to revert the objection at the PCT level, or you can go and uh, 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 revert the objection at the uh, the national level. So similarly, even in uh, for trademark, we have uh, Madrid application. So it is again a single window system. India became a member in 2013. Protection in over 100 countries. So you have to file an Indian application, select the designated country, and it is again a single window system uh, maintained and renewed through a single procedure. So you do not have to go in different countries and file, uh, pay the different fees, but it is a single. Uh, uh, single registration number so now you have uh, uh, you have reached after uh, uh, your strategy and you have put an efficient strategy in place your strategy to for complying all the related law that you have done you have done due diligence you have done pre and uh, pre analytics uh, uh, for before filing ip so you have filed an application and you now you need to expedite the application unless it is granted is no it has no meaning for uh, to you so it has to be granted and we cannot wait indefinitely for the grant so what happened the different countries have come together signed agreement which is called pph patent prosecution highway so these are the countries who have signed india also recently has signed with japan so uh, there could be multiple country there could be one to one country so under this scheme what happens application filed in the office of the first filing so the second filing if india has signed an application pph application with japan and your application is filed in India first, so Japanese examiner will rely on, on the Indian examination. Though it is not a binding, but they would rely on. So they would, they do not want to reinvent the wheel again. So, uh, and therefore, there could be chance, and in all likelihood, uh, the grant rate is much higher in PPH for the second application and uh, second file office of the second filing uh, and uh, the it is much more speedy there are various kind of network of agreement this should fall under your strategy how you can expedite whether to expedite at all that is another strategy for example some of the multinational companies they they generally uh, uh, do not expedite uh, expedite their application in india so what they do, they expedite their application in US and Europe, and their aim, intent, is to maintain the same prosecution strategy across the globe. So India comes at the last. So once it is granted, they, uh, uh, they try to get a grant which are similar to US and Europe. So again, it is a part of the strategy, part of WH questions, why, what, and how. So uh, global, we have a global PPH, we have IP5, US, Korea, Japan, Europe, China, bilateral agreement. There are about 34, uh, 35 patent offices. They have signed bilateral agreement. Asian Patent Examination Corporation. So these are again, there is a root, there is Adipo, there are various uh, routes through which uh, we can expedite a patent application and maintain a single strategic claim. Otherwise, you file an application in Malaysia, you get a different claims uh, in your grant. In a Singapore, different set of claims, or much more restricted claim, or uh, a broad claim. Thailand, altogether different embodiments. So, there, 
to bring consistency it is much better to uh, follow a, a, a route it could be pct it could be convention application it could be aripo aripo african countries for asian patent examination cooperation at times it is much efficient uh, to keep it uh, as a secret especially in food industry uh, where you can control the uh, control the information control the products uh, but trade secret as such it, it is not uh, anything that there are some features once it is fulfilled they are called as trade secret so that particular trade secret when it provides a business with a competitive advantage i have developed a spices uh, a particular uh, composition of spices which gives me a, a competitive advantage over others and i do not want to uh, let people know about uh, my, my composition then it is a trade secret and it has to be kept secret if we kept the detail of the composition on your table and allow public to see it is not a trade secret in india trade secret there is no codified law for trade secret in india it is only the uh, only the law of contract which govern the trade secret then comes licensing and strategic now you have patents now what to do your with your patent do you want to keep uh, keep on paying the renewal fee does it make any sense or you would like to license it and wherever you are not using it you abandon so license license either you license it or exit at the right time licensing out where you are not active <clears throat> so uh, claim benefit from a discounted maintenance fee in 20 countries there are about 20 countries where uh, there is a discount in maintenance fee strategic abandonment so the uh, the run we in cricket what we say the run we save the run we make so strategic abandonment exit at the right time is again and which is substantial saving in the maintenance fee there is no point in uh, 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 paying the renewal fee to the government so part of your due diligence and IT audit uh, strategy once it is granted the relevance of that particular IP should be checked from time to time now once you have all the strategic uh, IP strategy in place and what you get is this Kodak sold 1100 patent in 525 million to Apple Google Facebook Google bought motorola mobility 17000 patent 12 billion see all those 17000 patents uh, were were relevant at that point of time when google bought and these were developed on a particular pu business purpose qualcomm earns 6.6 .6 billion in patent license revenue every year which is more than their uh, pro their sell so final thoughts pre-filing strategies and patentability search tm availability search it's must uh, otherwise uh, there is a possibility that you are reinventing the will and a lot of money will go in drain file internationally when it is strategically important there is for as i said for each filing there has to be a business case so uh, each and every application there is no need unless strategy requires to go global file direct national application when you are only filing in couple of countries so again whether it is a pct whether it is a convention country you you all depends on your uh, for, uh, going strategy for going global 
so if you are filing only in two three countries there is no point in filing pct you know that i'll not be whatever may come i'll not file a more beyond i'll not go beyond india so therefore pct is not no point in spending about a lakh or so use pct madrid for tm to hold open option delay cost strategize to minimize cost file in as few countries as possible but yes you uh, it all depends on again your business strategy where will be your uh, i have given in one of our slide i have mentioned where are, are your competitors located ease of copying there are a lot of things your ip budget the, you can decide how many countries you should uh, file use pph when available to expedite prosecution let ip and business strategies talk to each other these the last one was the most powerful uh, statement in all the slides ip strategy and business strategy talk to each other ip uh, ip council or ip coordinator or ip team cannot take a call in silos it has to be based on the management decision or uh, or the strategies the last one uh, is the enforcement so uh, enforcement is not a very easy game it is cost intensive so uh, we need to take a call when we should enforce uh, when we need to give a pass so i am not going into details some of the tips and pointers before uh, there there was a situation where uh, uh, one one of the litigants file a patent infringement suit without having a valid uh, ip valid patent because they uh, failed to pay the the renewal fee uh, and they were not aware of they, they were they were not aware of so uh, so that also happened so ensure registration of ip ownership or right to use is in place so you need to find out more about the uh, defendant what is the extent of misuse financial and technical strength of your, the defendant you need to at times get this information from private investigators explore alternatives so it is the last thing to do get into uh, the uh, the litigation which is extremely cost intensive so uh, in case of a patent it is uh, if it uh, resolution can be done through uh, grant of a license good at times coexistence arrangement for trademark that also we do a lot assess the av available evidence patent if it is a patent infringement get a comparison done by independent uh, expert not an who is not an employee then only your case becomes uh, stronger filing suit without delay very important for interim injunction or these are the remedies so the moment you come uh, you come to know about the infringement file a suit take a call whether you will go for alternative resolution method or not thank you thank you so much uh, thank you so much sir uh, for the valuable uh, address sir, uh, i think uh, professor uh, jivirati sir has uh, joined us uh, sir uh, if you are there uh... sir, very good evening good evening yes. uh, thank you yes. thank you so much for you know enlightening our uh, participants and it was really a feast thank you so much for sparing your invaluable time in spite of your busy schedule that too on a weekend saturday but uh, i am very sure that the inputs given by you will go a long way in uh, you know in fact uh, uh, shaping the future strategies of all our ip enthusiasts who include uh, the ip uh, attorneys 
then uh, some of the inventors innovators including academia related to the intellectual property rights thank you so much sir we remain highly obliged to you forever uh, we have come to the end of the q and a session sir now i request uh, our colleague uh, uh, mr nagaraj to please propose the official vote of thanks uh, good evening sir good evening jv reddy sir and dr gautam bhattacharya sir ifan sir sirma sir on behalf of the dpiit ipr chair usmania university i would like to thank you resource persons for today dr gautam bhattacharya sir for a wonderful lecture on ip strategies thank you very much sir for sharing your valuable time and knowledge with us with best examples we look forward to having your support in future activities of the dpiit ipr chair i would also like to thank the participants of today's program for joining us and supporting the activities of the chair i also request you all please subscribe to the, our youtube channel and join the telegram channel and join us with the next episodes on the coming saturday thank you sir thank you very much you are most welcome and it's my uh, uh, it's a really privilege to be part of osmania university uh, this uh, know your ip lecture series thank you once again